I wanted to do a demo of using Docker. Docker is a container solution, so it's not full virtualization. It is still running on the original operating system, but to the things inside the container, hopefully it looks like it has its own operating system. Now, when you run Docker and you install on Windows or Macintosh, the way that it works is it creates a virtual Linux machine, and you're actually running Docker inside the virtual Linux machine on your system. So it is separated out from your system. When you run Docker on something like a Linux system, like Ubuntu Linux, then Docker is actually running on the system itself as opposed to being inside a container. So I've got three little scripts here. This is just to run a tiny little Python hello world. But 00.h pulls in an existing container. The way Docker works is you have a container and it builds everything up to a certain point and then you can reuse that container. So that container is essentially a read-only pure functional file system plus chroot so that it looks to the world like this container is fixed. So Python is an existing container on Docker Hub. This gives us the latest version, which I think is 3.8.4, maybe something like that. But we pull that in. So And it takes a while because it's going to download stuff. Probably in my case, it isn't going to take a huge amount of time because this is not the first time I've pulled it. But as you can see, it is pulling in stuff right now all the different pieces for building what's ever in that container. And each container has its own file describing how to build it. That's called the Docker file. And then we can build new containers on top of existing files. So once that that is pulled in, we can now turn around and this is the second little script to build my Python app container. And the T says that the name of it is going to be The dot says use the Docker container in the current directory. So if we take a look at that Docker container, we'll see that it just has a few commands. It says from Python 3, which is the container that we pulled, so that one has to be local. It says that the working dir is user source app. That's where your files are going to be inside the container. The working directory in your system is wherever you currently are. And then it says copy dot dot. The two dots are from your current directory on your system into the container, which is why we had to set the working directory first. And then it runs this command Python in the system on a file called hello world.py. Now, command says this is what you're to run, but it doesn't actually run it. So if you go look, there are about 30 different commands in the land of Docker. So it's fairly simple to use. And now that we have it, we can actually say docker run, which takes that command and actually executes it on that container. IT makes it interactive. So when I run it and I actually type it right, I get hello world, which isn't a very exciting result, except that this is all it takes to build and run an entire container. Now, containerization, if you go and look at Docker Hub, there are literally thousands of different containers you can run of every kind, size, or shape, and running them is about this difficult. So if you want to run uh, NGNIX web server, there's a pre-configured container for it. And a lot of times, the way to go about distributing software so that people can use it easily is you distribute it with a Docker container that says, copy in these files, run it, and everything is set up for them, and somebody else has figured it out. This is all the good side of Docker. There's some bad side, too. Um, if you look at my Docker file, you will see that it just says, use this container and run this. Now, in my account on my um, Macintosh, I'm running as just a general user. But the instant I go into the container, unless I add specific stuff to set up users and set up a user account and run something as a user, then I'm running as the root account inside the container. So you want to be wary of the security and how it works and what's going on in there. And do be aware of that risk that you're taking. But for stuff like development, it isn't really much of a risk. It's like, okay, 
I'm going to add Python and I'm going to run this and I'm not going to worry about the fact that my um, Macintosh has Python 2.7 in it. I can run this entire different version of Python inside my container and build and test with this other version cleanly. And if I go to another system, all I have to do is pull Python and turn around and set it up and run the container in Docker. And because Docker is a containerized virtualization system, it's really very efficient for most things. It means you're not taking up a lot of resources, and that same system that might be able to run 500 virtual machines, a big computer with lots of CPUs, can run 30 or 40,000 Docker containers in the same amount of time because it doesn't have the overhead. So there's a homework for both doing virtualization with VirtualBox, and there's also a homework for setting up and doing this. Go ahead and pull the scripts and install Docker, and I will give you those three scripts so that you don't have to like, and, and the Docker file, so you don't have to be thinking about how do I set this up and how do I get the Docker file. But go ahead and run it. When you do the homework, the thing to do is just do a little screen capture. Check in the screen capture. This is not a a big complicated kind of homework. We are getting to the end of the semester here and I want the homeworks to stay simple so you've got time to work on all of your other classes as well. So yeah, that's virtualization I think.